if you get up every day and you do the same thing over and over and you know that you're doing the right thing, you're going to see the improvement. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Floris Gehrman from the Extra Milest podcast, and we are here to connect with athletes, rookies makers, and coaches from around the world to really help athletes reach their full potential. Today, I'm going to connect with Bobby Parker. He recently ran a massive PR in a marathon, and he qualified for Boston. He went from a 3.39 all the way to a 3.13, so he PR'd by 26 minutes. And in today's episode, we're going to dive into his training program, what he did every single day of the week, um, from the regular training to the cross training to the strength training. We're also going to talk about motivation. He wakes up very early to train before work, just like some of you guys do as well. So what motivates him every day to get out of bed? And then we talk about several tips and tricks for other athletes like yourself on how you can improve your running and how you can become a healthier, happier and faster runner. And who knows, might, you might qualify for Boston as well. You run a PR in your own marathon. Also want to bring up, we recently launched a contest page. So we're doing weekly giveaways on my website at extramilist.com slash contest. And this week you can win two pairs of stand socks. So check it out over there and I will announce a winner once a week for different prizes. Without further ado, I'm very excited to introduce you to my new friend, Bobby Parker. Cool, well, welcome on the show. Stoked to, uh, to have you over here. Um, I think it would be good for the listeners back home to get a bit, a bit of an understanding of what some of your running background is. So maybe... You can tell a little bit more about yourself, about uh, where you're from, uh, what your age is, and how long yep. you've been running, just so people get a better, a better understanding. Absolutely. Well, my name's Bobby Barker. I live in uh, Frisco, Texas. So Frisco is about 20 miles north of Dallas, uh, downtown Dallas, Texas. Uh, it's a pretty large community. It's one of the fastest growing com- uh, communities in, in the U.S., uh, it's really family oriented, and we got a lot of weekend warriors, right? So a lot, a lot of those people like to get out, run, cycle. There's a lot of triathletes in this area as well. Uh, and basically, my my journey's been, you know, pretty typical for someone my age. I'm I'm 41 currently. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been I've been doing uh, weekend stuff like P90X is really kind of what got me into uh, working out. It's almost like um, a midlife crisis, right? Mm-hmm. So it's it's like you know I'm I'm getting a little chubby a little bit can't can't get rid of the fat around my waist and that that sort of thing. So you you start finding things that seem to work uh, with people, right? Uh, and you hear P90X is great, so you you start that up, right? Um, so I did that for a while. This was probably in 2012, 2013, right? Yeah. I decided to get off the couch and get a little bit more active, right? So this mm-hmm. has been about five years ago. Um, and so I met some people down at the gym and they were doing P90X as well. And one guy says, you know what, Bobby, I think you might do well at triathlon. And I'm like, what are you kidding me? I'm not a triathlete. I don't know how to swim. I don't have a bike or anything. Mm -hmm. And it's really, it's interesting. I'm going to get to how I got into running, uh, through this story, but, uh, he kind of challenged me, you know, he kind of is like, you know what, Bobby, you can actually do this. And I'm like, well, sure, I'm going to do it. So we actually signed up uh, to, to do the New York City Triathlon, um, and there was a lottery system. You didn't have to qualify or anything like that, and so me and two other buddies signed up, and sure enough, they drew my name uh, to be course. in the triathlon. <laughs> <laughs> so there was no way out at that yeah. point. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not, and so uh, luckily my, bo- uh, my buddies went along for the journey, and so I went out and bought a bike. Went out and bought a wetsuit and did all this stuff uh, to actually uh, go out and compete in a triathlon, right? Uh, so long story short, got into triathlon a little bit, loved it, uh, loved the running aspect. I did my first uh, half marathon. Uh, by the way, the New York City Triathlon was in 14, uh, July 2014, okay? I did my first half marathon in September of 2014, and just to give you a little perspective, I'm not doing Maffetone or anything like that, right? This is strictly, uh, um, you know, burning sugars and th- yeah. that sorts of things, right? Um, but I did my first half 
a marathon on a whim. It was uh, a couple of other friends said, hey, you know what? We're running a half marathon this week and go ahead and get your shoes uh, laced up. We're going to run this thing. And I'm like, okay, I, I guess I can do this. And right? this, was, this was 2014? Yeah, this was uh, September 2014. Mm. All right, it was my first half marathon. And it was really hot. Uh, it was actually my birthday that day. And I said, you know what? Let's just go out and have fun. And mile 10 and mile 11, I realized that I hate this. I cannot stand running. I'll be honest. <laughs> I mm -hmm. hate it. I couldn't, couldn't stand it. And finished, actually finished the race respectively. Um, it was an hour and 55 minutes, right? So uh, I felt like I was in great shape, you know, but I felt like I really accomplished something. When mm -hmm. I did my first half marathon, I was like, dude, I'm like a legit runner here. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, I'm like the man, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. And so um, after I finished, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done running. OK. And <laughs> what, know, I'm, I'm what, kinda, what's this yeah. you feel because you ran at a heart rate that was much too high? You used all of your energy that you had in you or? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Mile 10, I felt pretty good. And, you know, honestly, I was eating ch uh, chomps and things like that. Nutrition was a, an afterthought. OK. Yeah. Drink some water, whatever. Uh, doing all that stuff. And I was like, you know what? I. I can run this. It's not, it's not a big deal, but mile 10, 11, I was breaking down mentally. Mm -hmm. I was in, I, I was in a fog. I couldn't see what I was doing and I don't even remember crossing the finish line. It was just kind of like, and then I grabbed the bananas. I grabbed, they were having waffles and pancakes and I would just, anything you know, that you can get that, in yeah. your face at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I recognize exactly. that. Yeah. And so that was the, my first taste of, of actually racing a running race. Right. My friends decided to go ahead and do another half marathon in Dallas. Okay, so half marathon uh, took place and um, in Dallas, and I did a let's see here, I wrote that down, hour and fifty minutes. Okay, okay. Yeah. so it's you know it's pretty respected again, mm -hmm. uh, not not much improvement, but decided to do it. And um, then my friend says, hey, let's let's do a marathon, right? So I said I'm not going to do it, but I'll train with you guys. So they were training for the San Francisco marathon. Uh, in, let's see here, that would be July 20, uh, 2015, okay? That's a nice and hilly course as well. Absolutely, yeah. it was. Yep. So I was training with these guys. We were, you know, doing the thing, still not doing Mapitone, right? And um, about a month before the race, I decided to put my name in the hat, and I decided to run with them, all right? So I was like, guys, because it was um, one of my other friend's first marathon as well, and I thought, you know what, he's going to experience the full I want to do it as well. Yeah. Uh, so we, I decided to jump in as well. And I thought if I could do a sub four hour marathon, I'm going to be happy. Yeah. Right? And sure enough, um, I actually did finish that marathon in three hours and 55 minutes. That's okay? good for your first yeah. marathon in particular. Absolutely. Especially. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, it was mile 20, 21, 22, where I started hitting the wall, right? That's what we all talk about. Mm -hmm. And mentally, I didn't know what the wall really felt like, but now I know. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, along the way, nutrition, again, wasn't a big thing for me. It was it was like I'll eat some goo every once in a while, and I'll drink water. I didn't drink but, any but, but no strategy of let's set a no. timer or let's, yeah. It was more no. whenever you felt like it. Or, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that, I, yeah. that, that seems yeah. to happen quite often for people doing the first marathon or initially, like, I think nutrition is such a big part of that for sure. It's, it's huge. Yeah. Trust me. I mean, and, and the, the newbies out there, they, they need to realize that, um, uh, if you don't have the right nutrition along the way, you're going to hit a wall and things like that. So after that marathon, I realized I didn't have any electrolytes. So the only the only salt intake I was getting was maybe through the goo and, and things mm -hmm. like that, which wasn't enough. Okay. And so I was getting loopy along the way, the la last 20 or three or four miles, mile 20 or so. Uh, I just was in a fog. I couldn't, I just knew my body was running. Um, but I went downhill from there and my pace just really fell off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so then I said, after that marathon, I'm going to get back into triathlon um, just because I, I knew that was going to be more fun for me, yeah. you know, I, I liked running. It was fine. But, um, so I started training for a half, uh, Ironman and in September of that year, 2015, I got hit by a car wow. and I won't go into big details. Uh, 
but it kind of woke me up. It was God like spanking me in the rear saying, hey, you need to figure out what you're doing with your life. <laughs> right. Wow. That's kind of what I felt like. What, you know? Was it was it that bad? Did you get physically really injured or, you know, honestly, I wasn't. And that's what's interesting. Um, you know, the guy hit me directly from behind and we were on a straight road and I literally my my tailbone took the brunt of the of the impact and put a huge dent in the, the front of his car. Uh, on the hood of his car and then when he slammed on the brakes i rolled forward so i got i got a bunch of road rash uh from the incident but i walked away uh people were saying you're gonna be sore for days i didn't feel that you know so i i think i was physically fit you know to take mm -hmm. that um but i said you know what i'm i'm gonna not do that at this point and so i, I decided you know what i'm gonna run the dallas marathon okay i'm gonna just not do the triathlon because, you know, I didn't want to get on a bike at that point. So I ran my second marathon that December. So my first marathon was July and then December of 2015. I said, you know what, I'm going to focus these next three months because this was September when I had the bike wreck mm -hmm. and December uh, was the marathon. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go out and try to do it my way. Yeah. And my way was I want to run a sub 330 marathon. All right. So what do I do? Like anybody else, I go Google it, right? I Google, how do you run a, a sub 330, right? And what do you get? You get a bunch of stuff like, hey, let's run, do an easy run. Uh, then you're going to do, the next day, you're going to do some speed work at a seven, pa seven minute pace and then do all this stuff. And I'm like, mm. all right, I'll try to do that. Well, when it comes down to easy run, what does that mean, yeah. right? to the average person doesn't mean anything. It's, it's an opinion, right? I could run um, uh, an easy run and have a conversation because they say, well, if you can talk and things like that, that's an easy run, right? But to me, I could talk easily at 165 beats a minute, mm -hmm. you know? And I'm like, that's easy. Now, right. if I'm really running fast at maybe 170, 175, maybe I'm out of breath. Yeah. Right? And, and so that's how I gauged it. And there's so many factors impacting that as well, right? Whether it's the temperature, the, if, if you're on elevation, if you're yep. running in the hills, any of these things impact it. And, and that's where it's sometimes hard to gauge, really. Of, exactly. Uh, of where you're at, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and so I, that two and a half months of marathon training, which is not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things, but back then, two and a half months was a long time mm -hmm. for a newbie, right? Yeah. Um, I ended up running uh, a 339. Okay. So that was the best. I was trying to get sub 330, mm -hmm. but I was like, three, 339, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But I felt awful. At the end of the run, I just was toast, again, hitting walls, just, you know, walking the last few uh, water stations, you know. Um, but Everyone else was doing it in the race, too. Why, why, why can't I walk the water station? You know what I'm saying? I'm guessing that's normal, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I felt good. I felt like I accomplished something. But still, it was like, man, there's to, to get to the next level, what's it going to take? And I had no idea what it was going to take. So what did I do? I get back to triathlon, right? So I said, I'm going to sign up for the next half Ironman in, in Galveston in April. And I said, let's just do that again. And then we'll see what happens. You would not believe this one week prior to the Ironman Galveston, which is in April of 2016. Um, a person in front, I went out the weekend before on a bike ride, just a, a easy bike ride with the team, the Frisco tri club team. And, uh, I fell off my bike and oh. broke, broke my radial head bone on my arm. And so, <laughs> It was out. It was done. Wow. Yeah, I know. That was bad luck it was, twice. Yes, Some Something yes. in the universe <laughs> was saying you shouldn't be on a bike. <laughs> or at least not for that period yes, of time. Yes, exactly. And so, you know, I had to go into work the next day. And obviously, they knew about my incident with the, being hit by a car prior to that. And I had to go in with a sling. And I was, you know, it was almost my pride had me. You know, I was like, you know, mm. this is kind of embarrassing. Um, but I'm like, you know, how often do you have to get hit by a car or break an arm before you say, you know what, this is probably not for me right now. This mm -hmm. might not be the season. Yeah. And so I said, forget it. I'm going to rest. And so I rested for about six weeks and I said, I'm going to just start running. Mm -hmm. All right. I like running. Yeah. Um, plus it's a little bit more safe. Right. So this is how I got into math tone. 
All right. So uh, I had a buddy that went to the San Francisco Marathon with me. He he and I started running. His name's Jason Reeser. And and he said, you know what, Bobby, let's go run, but let's do a little different. And I said, I don't care. We can do whatever. He said, I'm going to send you a white paper. I want you to read this Dr. Phil Mathetone's white paper. And it's like, you've seen it. It's on the internet, right? Yeah. Uh, so I read that thing and I'm like, okay, you got to run 180 minus your age. Okay. That seems simple enough. Right. So this is so, for, for those who are not familiar with Dr. Yes. Phil Mephitone, yes. this is the 180 formula that, that he has developed over time. Correct. Okay. Uh, it's 180 B or 180 where you deduct your age and you adjust it by a few different factors. Whether that yes. is how long you have been training, um, whether you have recent colds and everything. So uh, we'll, we'll right. put a link to the formula for those who want to find out more so they can calculate it on their own as well. So, so you did the formula yep. for yourself? Yes, absolutely. So uh, I did the formula. And so at the time I was 40 years old. So the formula is easy, right? It's 180 minus my age of 40. So I targeted running at 135 to 140. 140. 35 to 140 beats a minute is kind of was my target, right? Yeah. So he and I were about the same age. And so we were decided, let's just start running that way, right? Well, we did. And I was like, I said, are we actually running here? Because this is not what I'm used to, to seeing, right? Mm -hmm. So we were running tip and, and let's go back to my, my marathons. You know, we're doing, you know, 330 mar or 339 marathons. I mean, we're doing eight something minute miles, right? Uh, I'm going out and running like a, a high 11, low 12 minute miles. Okay. At 140 beats a minute. Yeah. Right. And it was a huge wake up call. I was like, dude, this is not, this is not running to me. This is kind of a big jog. And are, are we serious? You know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, just, just, just give it a try. And I said, you know what? I have nothing to lose here. Right. And so we tried it. We tried it for a few weeks. And he says, well, let's do this. Let's, let's try to, I've, I've read where you can do a test, right? Just to see where you're at, right? And so we ran five miles um, and we tried to find the same track and we would just do that. And, and I found that my time was improving at that low, at that same heart rate. I was like, okay, uh, I haven't changed anything. I've just been running for the past month, you know, at a low heart rate, right? So, so, so what you refer so initially when you started out it was a, le a high 11s low 12s so you did your yes. those are your initial miles and then you did the yes. meth the meth test right so yes. where you go yes. to the track you warm up for 15 to 20 minutes and then yes. you run five miles and you you time every single mile yes and so what exactly. what, what was your first meth test like what was yes what was, okay. So let me, yeah, this is great. My first math test I did on July 6th, okay? Uh, and my time was, and my math test is a little bit different. I'm going to tell you how, explain how I do my math test, all right? It's very similar. I do a 15-minute warm-up, okay? Yeah. And it starts at, at 3 minutes, 80 to 90 beats a minute, and then 3 minutes, 90 to 100, 3 minutes, 100 to 110, and then up to 110, 120, and then at... 15 minutes, I start my math test, and it's done on a track, okay? So I warm up around the track, and then after the 15 minutes, I run three miles, okay? And then I'll incorporate that with a long run or something like that, but I run three miles straight, and I record that total time, yep. okay? And then we can do pace off that, but I run now on time only. I don't do, I don't do mileage or anything like that, so... My, my time for three miles was 33 minutes and 39 seconds, which equates to 11 minutes and 10 seconds a mile. That was my first math test, okay? Now, mind you, I had been doing um, um, this heart rate training for about a month at that point, yeah. right? So I, I hadn't done a test before or anything like that. So technically, if I was first getting into it, I would do a test right at the beginning. But I would say I probably improved about a 30 to 45 seconds a mile easily yeah. uh, in that one month. Okay, um, one month later on August 10th, uh, it went from a 33:39 down to a 30 minute and 17 seconds total, which is a 10, a little north of a 10 minute mile. Okay, so in one month, uh, now two months in at that point, I went from a high 11 down to a 10 minute mile. 
Okay. And those are huge improvements. Absolutely. And, and I was like, this thing's working, right? So I, I, I then started gathering information. At that point, it was, okay, now I need to consume info. How do I, how do I improve on this? So what did I do? I go out to, I joined the Maffetone Method Facebook page, right? Mm -hmm. And I start getting on there, and, and people are going through the same thing I'm going through. Just started math. I'm falling into these pitfalls. Anybody else doing that? Oh, yes. I, and you start texting. This is what I did, right? And so it's all this consuming that information, but at the same time, it validated what I was doing, right? That I'm actually doing the right thing. Um, and then I started, you know what? My diet wasn't there, right? And that's when I, I saw the two-week test. And again, you might mm -hmm. point to that link as well. Yeah. Um, but I did the two-week test. And I really think when I did the two-week test, which was a couple of months into my math training or math training, uh, method of running, um, that's when I saw the big improvements as far as uh, more of a fat burning um, is taking over my body, right? So before it was still, you know, consuming a lot of carbs and things like that, but I decided, you know what, let's do the two-week test. And just so you know, the two-week test was a nightmare for me because <laughs> after three days, the, th the third day... I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but if, if you're like me and you're you're 40 years old now, your whole life you've been consuming carbs and sugars and all that stuff because that's what that's what's around, right? That's what's available um, for your body to not have that for three days straight. It goes into shock, right? And so mentally, I was like, something's wrong with me, right? Um, but after four or five days on the two week test. I, I could feel my body transitioning because it now has no sugar at that point for energy. Mm -hmm. So when I'm going out for a run during that two-week test, it's saying, okay, there's nothing here to sustain me. I'm going to have to pull energy from somewhere, and that came from fat, right? And that and is so, where the fat burning starts improving, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. And I honestly think um, for your followers, you know, if they're in the same boat as me when I was starting off, yeah, it's the it's doing the 180 formula and doing the low heart rate running, but I really think when I when I kicked in the two week test, that's when I started really seeing the change in my body physically. All right, because then it became, um, you know, I was weighing about 160 pounds prior to the the math test and all or the math method, uh, and then after that two week test, I went from 160 down to 147. Um, pounds right so lost about 13 pounds in, during in that a, two week in a, in a two week window yeah now it was about a month yeah. right so i ended up losing about seven pounds during the two week test wow that's... and then it just kept falling off that is a okay? lot and so that... yeah I, I lost a ton of weight um but i'm just thinking that's just all that excess weight that i've been carrying around unnecessarily right mm -hmm. um but I, I i was really um uh, structured, I, you know, I wrote down everything I ate, uh, when I consumed it, what my body felt like mentally, what I was thinking about. Um, and so I went back, you know, through those notes and I realized, okay, this is my body actually changing and getting off of carbs and sugars. And, and, and you go to the, uh, the Maffetone, uh, Facebook page and people are going through the two week test too. And you're, you're, you're seeing them going through what you're going yeah. through and it's validating. Yes, absolutely. This is what's, yeah. So for you, some of the biggest changes were you cut out the carbs and you cut out probably like the majority of other sugary items, whether they're yeah. like the breads, the pizza, the bagels, the, the fruity yeah. drinks, the, the sodas. And, absolutely. And, and then what, what, so what was it during that two-week test that you did end up eating? Yeah, so here's, here's what my diet consumed of. Um, I would go run. Oh, and let me kind of give you a background on, on how, how I do my workouts, okay? So obviously, I, I'm a typical, you know, I go to the office uh, Monday through Friday. I don't have a real flexible schedule. So all my workouts are first thing in the morning. So I get up at 4.30 in the morning. And I try to, yeah, but that's the only way I can do it, right? Yeah. And so I get up at 4.30. I'm typically out the door by 5, 5 a.m., and I'm typically done by 6 in the morning. So I'll get about an hour workout. Um, 
But during that, during that time, what I was consuming for breakfast, for instance, I would come home right after the run and I would, I would make an omelet and, uh, an egg and cheese and spinach omelet, right. Or scrambled eggs with cheese. Uh, also would get some avocado, get some, it's this typical stuff you would see on the two week test. Right. And they have a big blog of, of things you can eat and can't eat. Right. And I'm like, can you have this? Oh no, you can't eat that. Um, but I, I consumed that. I consumed a lot of fajitas without the tortillas, right? Mm-hmm. So I would get the big pan, and it'd have all the vegetables. It'd have all the, the meat in there. And the sour cream and the guacamole, avocados and all that stuff, just piled it on. Ate a lot of that um, during the two-week test. Um, I hit up Zoe's. I don't know if y'all have Zoe's in California, but Zoe's is uh, kind of more of a Mediterranean style, mm-hmm. right? But no rice or anything like that, but lots yeah. of vegetables which I'm not used to consuming, right? But I did find this. After the two-week test, um, I could eat things after that that I typically couldn't eat and it not give me a problem like indigestion indigestion and things like that. So, for instance, bell peppers was a, a deal for me. Prior to the two-week test, I, I couldn't eat bell peppers, but now I can consume them and it doesn't have a, an issue with my body. It doesn't fight it, right? And I think it's the fact that I had all those carbs and they're just kind of counteract. You know, I don't know the the you know the technical way this thing works, but it worked for me. I could now consume those vegetables and it not be a, a problem. Um, but the whole point of of going back to this was was the fact that once I did the two week test and got on to that kind of that low that low carb high fat diet, that's when I really saw the fat kind of come off, and then I eventually got down to one forty five. Another thing that changed with me on my body, uh, doing the math method and kind of doing that low carb, high fat diet, uh, was I noticed um, the veins in my calf muscles being more pronounced. Okay, um, and I, I just attribute that. Just I think my body at that more uh, at that time is becoming more efficient with getting oxygen to my lower extremities. Uh, that was another thing, and then obviously just the the uh, weight coming off my waist. Yeah, it's, uh, th- th- that is one of the biggest things, right? It's probably yeah. you're just shrinking down everywhere in your body. Yes. Like I've gone yeah. through similar things as well where I have dropped in, in a show, few months after I changed my nutrition, just like you, where I yes. used to, I'm from Europe myself. I used to eat eight slices of bread a day. And for oh, yeah. me, it was yeah. so normal to eat pizza, pasta, bagels, any of those kind of things. And even for me to switch that all the way around towards eating much more like real food, eating much more yeah. vegetables, eating like, I eat quite a few nuts as well, um, like high fat, definitely. Sure. Um, I saw that change happening in a short period of time. I also went from about 170 pounds to 145, like probably over, yeah. over a yeah. three, four month period. And it's even the smallest examples. I have a wedding ring from 2009 Yeah. that, at, like right now it keeps falling off and I still yeah. need, to, need to have it resized because it's just everywhere in your body you seem to have just shrank some of your additional Absolutely. body fat. And even one pound less already makes running so much easier. Oh yeah, And so if, if you over, over that period of time drop 13 pounds, that alone already makes you a much yeah. faster runner without Absolutely. even trying really. So. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean imagine carrying a, around a 15 pound dumbbell you know, on a run, you yeah. know. On, on a marathon. I mean, just like crazy. I, I want to drop that, yeah, right? It's absolutely. not something you want to just carry along. Absolutely. But yeah. And so I just, I, you know, again, I, I have my hats off to Dr. Phil Maffetone and, you know, all of his followers and, and those sorts of things. I mean, it was just trying to get that knowledge. I, I mm-hmm. knew I was doing the right thing, yeah. uh, but I was all in at that point. It's like, okay, this is what I want to do. And so after that two week test, my friend picked up a coach and he found him in the Maffetone uh, Method uh, uh, Facebook page, and his name's Nick Carling. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you heard of Nick Carling, but Nick Carling yeah, was, I've heard uh, it. yeah. So he he's out of Australia, but he's been interviewed by Dr. Phil Maffetone as well, and he was on the website and basically promoting what he does. And I I call him up and said, hey, I'd like to get a coach, and and I thought if I could find a coach that was. Um, that was inspired by Dr. Phil Maffetone and, and that method, I felt like um, it would just reiterate what I'm doing, right? Because 
in the end, I'm a rule follower. Okay. That's just my personality and I need structure. And if someone says, Hey, here's the plan you're going to do. And this is a heart rate and all that sort of thing. I could follow that plan pretty much without any, anyone overseeing me. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of worked out that he's in Australia and I'm in Texas. Um, so I said, Hey, let, here's the deal, Nick. I, I want, I'm telling my coach this, Nick, I want to get to Boston. All right. This is my ultimate dream. Okay. So, um, I want to run at Boston in 2018 if possible. What do I got to do to get there? You know, and he said, well, we got to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but, you know, it's just going to take some time. We're going to see how you progress. We're going to do these math tests and eventually it's going to chip away and you're going to get faster and faster. And, and I said, all right, well, I'm in. Let's just make this happen. And that's what started this journey, you know, of, of really the math uh, method for me. So it, it was literally about, you know, it started June of 2016. So it's about I'm about 15 months into this thing at this point. Right. Um, and we're going to eventually get to kind of where I got to today. But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just to kind of give you an idea on my math test, because, again, you know, if I'm a new person and I think I want to reach the people that are listening to this podcast, I really want to reach the people that are just now starting out because uh, a year or 15 months sounds like a whole lot of time. But you need to realize this is not just a long term play this or a short term play. This is a long term play for me. Right. This is a lifestyle change. This is what I want to do. This is this is what uh, brings joy to, to me and to others around me, because uh, when I'm a happy person, the people around me are happy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so um, th that's the, the approach I take. So uh, if I'm a new person that's just now starting this this long journey, j just realize you might be taking some short term uh, setbacks or or maybe, you know, just, you know, your 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 pace is a lot slower than than what you're typically used to running. Just realize that this is a this is a test. I mean, this is this is just a little a little snapshot or just a little. Uh, slice of the pie, so to speak, of to where you're eventually going, right? And so my my purpose of this meeting or this this interview is just just kind of give people a little bit of encouragement that there are people that are just like me and just like you that are out there that are struggling uh, to get going and and to to find uh, that the next level for them. But just know we're all in this together, right? So. Um, you know, to me, I would I would start off with the math test because early on for me, that's that's where I, I found the joy was the the little improvements, the the 30 seconds a mile coming off the, the pace. But I could see that every month because I do a, a math test every month. And I was like, wow, I'm getting some huge progress. And that, you know, pro I, that progress is what helps the motivation, right? Because I, exactly. that is the mm -hmm. biggest thing that I see with people starting out um, training at low heart rate is the yeah. frustration levels are definitely there for some people. When Absolutely. they're used to training seven, eight, nine minute miles and all of a sudden yes. they have to slow down so significantly. And some people have to take walk breaks as well or quite yep. a few people actually have to take walk breaks, especially after, after a little bit of time. And once you start seeing that progress, even for, for myself, once I was running and I saw, I believe, a 40 second progress from one mm -hmm. month to month per mile, I was yeah. like, wow, if that's 40 seconds per mile, look at what that does over the length of a yep. marathon. The, exactly. at, the, at the same effort, you're going to be running so much faster. Yeah. So. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, again, my math test started at, you know, high 11s, the next month, 11, 10, the next month, 10 minute miles, the next month I was at a nine minute mile. Right. And so I, over at September 4th, I ran a math test in 27 minutes and four seconds, which is mm -hmm. a nine minute mile. And cause again, I'm doing a three mile test, right? So why do you do, minutes. why do you do three miles and not five yeah. miles? Yeah, so uh, my coach recommend just doing three miles. Um, you know, typically what in in you know I don't know if I, I don't know the methodology, but or the reasoning behind that. But that was just what my coach said. So okay. it seemed to work, and it was consistent with everything else. Um, the way my math test worked though was was typically on the on the front end of a long run. Okay, so I I 
my structure is like this. So Mondays or, or Sundays are my long runs, okay? And they would average, you know, depends on uh, what point of the marathon training I'm, I'm in. It could go anywhere from an hour and a half to upwards to a two and a half hour run, okay? Mm -hmm. Mondays, Mondays were 30 minute zone runs, okay? And when I say a zone run, that means in my math uh, zone of call it 135 to 140, somewhere in that neighborhood, um, 30 minutes. But each each day I would have a 15 minute warm up and a 15 minute cool down. Okay, and so if 30 minute zone run means I was running for 60 minutes. Okay, for 60 minutes of activity, uh, that was Monday. Then Tuesday was typically a heels for me. Uh, which was about a 40 minute zone of heels. Okay. Can you, can you uh, verify or explain a little bit more yeah. about that? Yeah. So the, the whole idea is to get about three, uh, three miles worth of heels in. All right. So what I do is I, I find a heel that I can't remember the percentage of grade, but it might be like a 10% grade or something like that. Um, but I would warm up for 15 minutes, not on the heels, get to the base of the hill and I'd run up and this hill is about a a third of a mile, you know, or a quarter of a mile to get to the top. And, and during that, um, my coach said, you know, it's okay if you go a little bit over your math. Um, but, but, you know, try not to get much too over. So I might get up to like a 145, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood and then drop back down to, you know, when I'm coming back down, my, my pace is a lot faster. Um, but so I, yeah, I try you to have that quick turnover still. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then and I get to the base of the hill and I do that four or five times, uh, but just it would it would equate to about 40 minutes. Right. Uh, and then I would do a 15 minute cool down. Um, and so that was the Tuesdays. Um, Wednesdays were a 30 minute zone bike ride for me. All right. So my coach says, hey, let's let's try to do some things where you're not pounding the pavement with your joints, but still doing aerobic activity. Uh, so that's why I would do, you know, again, 15 minute warm up on the bike. Uh, and this is a stationary bike. I'm not going outside and riding, uh, cause I've learned my lesson. <laughs> um, but, but it's basically, um, you know, getting, getting in there and doing that cardio or, you know, the, the aerobic uh, zone for about 30 minutes doing that. And then Thursdays were track work. Okay. Track work didn't come, uh, to me until, uh, earlier this year. Okay. So I didn't do any track work last year, hardly at all. So you first um, built that full aerobic base yeah. until you almost yes. hit a plateau or until you start seeing exactly. less progress. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, I didn't have any track work. What he did do though, early on, uh, last year, um, you know, last fall and winter, uh, which we trained up to the Dallas marathon again, that was my third marathon. Um, you know, we had some freedom runs is what he called them. So Thursday would be a freedom run with no heart rate monitor. It's kind of a runoff field type thing, right? Just however you feel, just run, run that, right? Uh, Fridays were my days off. Um, and then Saturday I would have a long bike ride again, uh, typically anywhere from 60 minutes to a 90 minute zone bike ride. And then back to Sunday would be a long, long run. So that's kind of how my schedule worked. Uh, six days of activity one day off and two of those days are bike rides right um and so that that last dallas marathon in december um that was my first really marathon uh at that point i'd done six months worth of math training right um and it wasn't a pr but let me just tell you how i felt okay i decided to run that marathon just strictly on heart rate Right. So I'm doing 140s, you know, low 140 heart rate, and I'm getting average eight and a half to nine minute miles. Right. Um, I ran into some buddies at mile 19 because they took <laughs> off um, first. And I said, well, y'all go ahead. I'm going to just mm -hmm. do this. I caught them at mile 19 and they were just struggling. It was it was funny. I love these guys. And, and I said, guys, I got to I got to keep going. I'm sorry. I can't run uh, with you guys anymore, but just took off. But felt amazing. All right. So I had negative splits and my, my last mile in December was a seven sixteen mile. <laughs> um, and, you know, I was like, this is how you're supposed to probably run these races right? and actually have energy left at the end. Yes. Yeah. It was amazing. Exactly. You know, exactly. the last three or four miles were sub eight. And like I said, the last mile was seven sixteen, And I was like, I felt like on cloud nine. Now yeah. I ran a three forty five. Mm. Okay. 
Uh, so if you recall the prior uh, year I did Dallas, I did 339, 339. But, yep. but I was trying to do a three sub 330 and I felt terrible, right? Yep. So, so then, so, yeah. Sorry to ahead. interrupt because this is interesting. Yeah, no. You're saying yes. you are racing at basically your MEF heart rate. Whereas typ typically with a marathon, like it's very frequent that you, you train at, at or below math. However, at an actual marathon race, you can race 10, 15 beats ish yep. higher than that. Why did you decide 140 and not 150, yeah. 155? That, that, that's a great question because I knew this marathon wasn't going to get me into Boston. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and I knew if I went out and ran a 155 average heart rate somewhere in there, uh, that my recovery is going to be a lot longer. So I was sacrificing this race for the long-term uh, plan, which yep. was uh, to get into Boston. So I said, you know what, I'm just going to run a decent race. I'm not going to try to blow it out of the water or PR or anything like that. I just wanted to see how fast I could run at math. Yeah. And I could do eight and a half to nines, right, at the time. Uh, but then I was like, you know what, there's five miles, six miles left in the race. I'm going to now, my heart rate went up, obviously, oh, to course. get to a 716. Yeah. And so, um, but at that point, I was only running five or six miles at a higher heart rate. But it felt good to, because for six, seven months, I hadn't really gone out and run fast, right? Mm -hmm. So I had no idea how fast I could run, right? Uh, and that was an interesting thing, because I was like, wow, I'm actually going fast, and I can, I feel good, and all that stuff had a lot of energy. Um, but I loved it. And so I said, you know what, now, now the focus is how do you get to Boston? Right. And so that's when I signed up for Chicago land, uh, which is in Geneva, Illinois. They had a last chance Boston qualifier, which was actually last weekend. It was September 9th. And, um, I said, all right, I've got basically nine months now, uh, to really gear up and see what I can do. Right. And so my, my coach, Nick, he put me on a great plan. Uh, where it was some of the same stuff. It was, you know, the same structure, uh, but the track work was a little bit more intensive. Um, the mileage didn't really ramp up until, let's say, maybe May in that neighborhood. And it was really methodical the way we ramped up, right? You know, it, it, we don't do anything based off mileage. It's all based off time, okay? So the idea was every three weeks, we would increase our long our long runs by about 10 minutes, okay? Which is about, you know, a little over a mile, that's all, right? So you would do that every three weeks, and by the time we peaked on the long runs in, uh, let's say the middle of August, okay? Again, the race was September 9th. Uh, the middle of August, we were peaking at a three hour uh, run, but again, that three hour was, includes a 15 minute warm up yeah. and a 15 minute cool down. So I had a two and a half hour zone run, OK, and I was peaking at about when you add those warm up and cool down about a 20 mile run. OK, at that heart rate. OK, so it wasn't over or anything like that. Um, and let me also add, I, I was doing the 180 minus my age the whole time. But I started tweaking back up because if, if you recall, obviously, Dr. Phil Maffetone says, depending on your condition, you can add five. Right. Well, I had done 180 minus my age, which is 140. So I i didn't tell my coach this, but mentally I said, you know what? I'm going to go up to like a 144, right? So I was like, 144 is now, uh, my because I was 41, I'm 41 now, um, was 139 was my 180 minus the age, which is 139 added four to one four, or five to 140 to get to 144. So, yep. And, um, and the five, basically once you train for two or more years consistently, three or four yes. times a week, you're able to add five beats according to this formula, yes. right? So Yes, and, and also another good gauge, like you say, uh, I've heard you mention this as far as getting colds and things like that. Uh, my body's not, you know, subject to that anymore. I don't have any colds. I haven't, haven't been sick in a couple of years as well. So, you know, I, I felt like I could add five comfortably and, and not feel like I've cheated myself. And right? you listen to your body. And once your body Absolutely. says that it's the right thing to do, that's, that's why it's also sometimes I feel you have to watch out with some of these formulas as well that if you yeah. follow it too strict with some of these things, of course, it is a guideline. However, 
on some days you might not feel like running at at this heart rate or you might even have a hard time keeping up with that heart rate or other times absolutely um you might might go a few beats over it i think sometimes <laughs> I see certain people are so black and white about this thing where at yes. the end of the day, listening to the body is most important. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, absolutely. And, and I'm, I'm in the same boat, you know, I'm not a, when it came to this running in, in the long, early on, I was black and white. Let's just be honest. I was a rule follower. This is what I need to do. But as those long runs progressed and as I get to heels, yeah, my, I would get up to a 148 or a 150 and then I just kind of slow, slow down a little bit, you know, and I'd, I'd have my, my watch, you know, would alarm would go off and say, hey, look, you're, you're over your whatever. Sometimes I'd tell it to be quiet and just, you know, I'd just do my own thing. But most of the time I'd slow down. Um, but, you know, what was interesting and, and um, you know, I, I, I enjoy consuming information about people that have gone before me, right? So, for instance, you, you're your person that, that now I follow, right? Because I'm like, well, this guy's done it. He's done it for several years now. He's probably two or three years ahead of me, um, and so I'm I'm interested to hear what what his feedback is. But along the way, you you just you you find ways to uh, or people you know uh, uh, to get information. Perhaps they had the same pitfalls. So you actually asked you know the group. You said, hey, what are some interesting topics, right? Well, one of the topics for me at the time it was really uh, relevant was now I'm getting into the summer months here and I live in Dallas, Texas and it's really hot and humid. Uh, and I was like, I'm not seeing any improvement on my math test, right? Mm. So at this point I'm, I'm averaging about, um, let's see here, an 8010 or 810, 807 pace, right, per mile. And I knew I, to get to Boston, I need to probably be around a 735 because to me, I had to get to a three, a sub three fifteen to get to Boston, right? For your uh, age, for your age for my group, age, that is, right? For my age group, yep. yes. Uh, and so mentally, I was thinking that means I got to run, you know, about a seven twenty seven pace uh, to, you know, qualify. Um, but I was thinking I got to get to like a, a sub seven forty at least on a math test before I know I have a legitimate shot at this, right? So. You know, I'm getting 820s, 807s, 810s on these math tests, and I was like, I know it's hot now, but what is what what does that play on my heart rate? You know, when it's you know 25 degrees hotter when it's humid here, versus when I know in Geneva, Illinois, on race day, I'm going to be racing in like low 50s and Ide ideal race temperatures. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, I I didn't know. You know, and so I'm like, what, what am I going to do when I get there? Am I going to be able to perform? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, luck, luck would have it. We had a cool spell here locally. Right. And you're not going to believe this. A week before um, I went to Chicago for the race. So this was just a couple of weeks ago. I did a math test. And mind you, I was doing 807, 805, 804. The last those were my three prior math tests. And then I did an eight minute on August 19th math test. Well, September 3rd, I did a math test and averaged a 737 mile. Okay. And it was cool. What a was, difference that is. Yes. And, and I'm going to attribute that to training, but also the weather, the weather had a huge impact, right? Temperature. I've, I've noticed it myself. Temperature makes such a massive difference. Over, yep. over here, I live in uh, Costa Mesa and I run in Irvine. It's a bit more inland. Um, and yep. during the week, even this week, it was 80, 85 degrees out. And so the difference right there, like in temperatures, that's, or like in, in Celsius, that's 28, 30, 30 degrees sometimes. Um, it made a massive difference this morning when I ran 15 miles at math, all of a sudden I saw my pace drop 45 yeah. seconds per mile or something, just yeah. that temperature difference right there. I've even, I've even done it back-to-back -back days where one day I ran during the day and yep. it was 100-something degrees. The next day I ran at 5 in the morning and it was 70 yep. degrees. And the difference yep. was, I believe it was more than a minute per mile. So absolutely, yep. temperature makes a massive difference. So. Yep, yep, yep. So 
we're all kind of getting to this this last finale here on on kind of I guess why you why you reached out to me because I finally I finally reached my dream. All right, and that mm -hmm. happened last week, yeah. and uh, and it was a it was uh, an amazing feeling. Let me just tell you, my coach had a great plan for me. Uh, the nutrition, by the way, was excellent. Okay, so what I consumed was about fifty to sixty grams of carbs. Okay. So now I'm talking in grams of carbs where two years ago, I would say, okay, I'm going to take a goo every 45 minutes or whatever. Now it's, okay, this is what it looks like. Okay, so I ate those blocks, those cliff blocks. I would do one of those blocks every 15 minutes, and then I would consume Gatorade along the way, right? And so I would get that, that nutrition. Also consumed electrolyte uh, tabs uh, every 45 minutes, right? So I think there was three of them throughout that. Um, but started the race off really strong. We had a pacer that was pacing us at average of 717 a mile, right? I didn't know what that really felt like, you know, uh, training wise, I kind of thought what it would, what it would feel like, but stayed with the pacer as long as I could. We were, you know, going anywhere from 708 to, you know, 720 pace miles, right? Mm -hmm. And that was too, honestly, that was probably a little faster than what I should be, should have been doing based off my math test and things like that. I probably should have been pacing around a 720, 725. What was your heart rate at? Yeah, so here, this, this is the great thing. My coach says, you know what, Bobby, I, I think we're going to go off pace alone. He says, this is what I want you to do. And mind you, I've been doing heart rate training at this point, 15 months. He says, you know what? I want you to ditch your heart rate monitor, just not even wear it. And I said, are you sure? He said, yeah. He says, I'm a data guy. He said, but the last thing I need you to do is focus on heart rate, all right? Because if you go off and your, your heart rate's at a high 150 or, or low 160s, you know, you, you, mentally you might not be prepared. So I said, fine, I'm not going to wear it. Well, that was the first time I hadn't worn my heart rate monitor in 15 months, okay? And it was weird, mm -hmm. uh, but I listened to my body, right? And I just went off how I felt. And honestly, if, if I was to be wearing a heart rate monitor during that race, I probably would have, I probably would have averaged mid 150s, I'm thinking, or high 150s throughout most of the race. Uh, maybe even a little higher. It might be low 160s. You know, it's kind of hard to gauge. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I ran, I averaged about, you know, anywhere from 708s to 720s for like the first 16, 17 miles. And then my pace kind of started slipping a little bit. Um, you know, I had like 725, 727. I knew at that point I was, I was really close, right? Because, again, to get a sub 315, I needed 727 average is what I needed. Mm -hmm. And my last three miles, I ran a 745, a 750, and a 752, okay? Those are my last three miles. So I fell off, obviously, right there. But I think what happened was my, I had muscle fatigue. I think more than anything, my, my quads were just kind of shot. My, my calves were just kind of, you know, not there. Um, but I really think I went out too hard uh, mm -hmm. based off my fitness level at the time. But I wanted to get there. And sure enough, after the race, I finished in three hours and 13 minutes and, wow. and 16 seconds. That yeah. is so amazing. Yeah. So, so you, that yep. was a massive PR for you right there. Yes, yes, yep. So again, going back to my, my prior PR was a 339. And so basically I shaved off uh, 26 minutes or a minute a mile is what I did. So I averaged a 724 um, and felt great. You know, I was, I'll be honest, at the end of the race, I felt dead. I felt beat. <laughs> I felt, you know, exhausted. And you gave um, it your all. And I gave it my all. And here's the deal. You know, we, we all know, you know, people that are trying to get to Boston, it's not about qualifying, but it's getting to the start line, right? And, and I, I knew a minute 44 was going to be close. I don't know if it's going to be enough. I'm going to find out in the next couple of days because they're going to open up registration for, for my group tomorrow. Yeah. Um, three and four years ago, it would be enough. The last two years, it wouldn't be enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what's it going to be like? But here's the deal. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. OK, because my, my goal, you know, a year and a half ago, and I'll be honest, this goal of mine to, to reach Boston has been longer than a year and a half. It's just been a kind of a dream. Right. 
Uh, but to really start that dream and actually live it was about a year and a half ago. And I achieved my dream, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I say it's a dream. I'm a dream killer. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so it felt really good to just say, hey, I, I, I technically qualify for Boston. Yeah. I, can, I can legitimately sign up and run Boston. All right. And so at the end of the day, I might not be there on 2018. But you know what? You even said this. I, I'm progressing and I'm getting faster. That's, and I know that's the thing. Know, if you've exactly. progressed 26 minutes right now, yeah. and, and it is a marathon, not a sprint, right? You said it really yeah. well. And that is the yeah. biggest thing with this thing. Month after month, consistency and training. Yeah. Um, eventually is going to, yeah, you're going to continue improving. And yep. obviously it also depends on how many hours a week are you willing and available to throw at this. If, exactly. If you're able to increase your training volume significantly or keep even at what you have been doing at this point, yes, you're going to continue progressing most probably. Yep. For, for me at one point, yes, it's great if I can run 70, 80 miles a week and like I would start seeing progressions. I just at some yeah. points go through training cycles and other priorities as well, whether it's with family Absolutely. or with work. So it's at some point you want to find where that balance is, but you, yep. you still have so much progression ahead of you as well. So whatever it's yep. going to happen, I'm super excited for you. Just how much Thank progress you. you have made already. So. Thank you. It's, it's been great. And again, it, it, it takes a, a village here. I mean, there's a lot of support. Like you say, the family's got to be there. The stress has got to be out of your life. Uh, you know, honestly, we went through a lot this year. Uh, you know, we built a house, we've, you know, moved, done all that stuff in the middle of all this training and stuff. But at the end of the day, I, I, I do what I do because I love it, right? I love getting up in the morning and, and challenging myself. But it doesn't take a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I'm doing mid-30s to yeah. low-40s average miles per yeah. week, okay? And so, but I'm, I'm also doing the, the bike as well. So six days a week, I'm putting in an hour a day, you mm -hmm. know, on the weekends a little longer. Yeah. Uh, but anyone can do this, you know, Absol you just gotta absolutely. be willing to do it. I did. I, for my last marathon that I ran last month, I actually ended up averaging only 31 miles in total, which yeah. was much, I saw that. What, much less than I initially wanted. I planned on 35 to 50 miles. Um, however, it's, it just had other priorities come in the way as well. I do yep. want to look at one thing that you had mentioned earlier because yes. you said I wake up between 4.30 and 5 to get my exercise in. How do you motivate yourself consistently to get that done? Oh, that's a great question. You know, um, a lot of praying, uh, a lot of meditating, uh, a lot of surrounding yourself with people that are like-minded, right? So I have a buddy that, that's been to Boston before. He's he's run, you know, 305 Boston. He's it's it's people that you 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 find that have been there right mm -hmm. it's you you know it's it's getting on facebook it's it's finding the people that that have that are that are where you're at now where you're at i want to be in in a year or two right uh it's that motivation it's 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 things like that it's the little things it's not about the running all right it's it's ultimately to be the best version of you as you can possibly be all right and that's not so that I can benefit, right? But that's so people can see what I do and they can be inspired to become a better person for themselves, right? So I do the things that I do to help raise a denominator for everyone around me, right? Mm -hmm. And so how do I do that? I look to people like you, Flores, and people that have gone before me who's done the same thing and said, hey, um, this, is, this is how I've gotten to where I've gotten. And I want to share my story with everyone else who who's just starting off that, you know what, if you think of running as just a way to improve yourself, you're going to be so much better off as opposed to, well, I got to I got to get a pace or a mile or whatever. But you know what? You're bettering yourself. Right. And so people are going to benefit from that. And yeah. so that's what that's what I would implore other people to do. So absolutely. And when, when I was thinking about that question for a bit as well, what. Sometimes, so even this morning, right? Like last night, I went to bed, didn't get that much sleep, but I still knew I wanted to get an early morning run in because once once the Sunday starts and we're, we're surrounded by the kids and there's a lot of activities happening, yep. I just don't get my, my run in. So 
set my alarm at five this morning and I already put my phone away. So I have my wristband yes. with my Fitbit that first does the initial that wakes me up. Yep. So it's the vibration alarm. Then I have my phone three minutes. I have an alarm <laughs> on my phone three minutes later. That's on the other side of the room. Yeah. So I'm yeah. automatically getting out that way. And it's purely routine. I have everything ready yep. by the door. I already like, I'm going to be quiet yep. not to wake up the family. Yep. And it's just yep. going through the steps. And eventually, yep. like as soon as you have your shoes out and you're outside of the door, you're going to enjoy, you're like you're good. And sometimes even yep. when you don't necessarily get your hours of sleep in, although sleep is very important, it just doesn't always happen. Yeah. Um, yep. I feel like once you're out of the door running, it's, uh, it's all good and Absolutely. well. But I do tend to look at what is my goal as well. Like I know I have a race coming up in, um, in October and I do know that I need to put in my miles. And although I might not always necessarily feel like doing that run at that point, I know once I'm running, I'm absolutely enjoying it and it's purely yep. getting over that initial hump. So yep. That's, yep. Uh, that's, that's one for me that, that kind of yep. helps as well. One, one uh, more question I want to, I know we've already yes. been talking for an hour, so don't want to no. take, take up too much more of your time here, but I do want to ask you, what is your advice or your recommendation on people who want to improve their marathon times, people who want to go to Boston? Like you've yes. already touched on several good points, but maybe you can summarize over here and if you have any yeah. additional things to, to add. Absolutely. The one thing I would say more than anything is consistency, right? Above, above everything and uh, that I could uh, basically talk about is if you get up every day and you do the same thing over and over and you know that you're doing the right thing, you're going to see the improvement. And, and I think uh, if, if you're just consistent over time, you know, stay with that heart rate, um, you know, the 180 formula. If you can continue to do that over time, you're going to see those progressions and do your math tests, you know, every, every three to four weeks. You're going to see those improvements and you're going to just build and build and you're going to get the momentum. So early on, it's consistency. I think after that, ultimately, I, I, my hat's off to my coach. I, I need structure, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to find someone who can put that structure in place that says on Monday, you're doing this, Tuesday, this, and, and go out the whole week. This is what your workout looks like. And at that point, I don't have to worry about when I wake up in the morning, what am I going to do? Yeah. Well, I know what I'm going to do. It's yeah. right there. Uh, so I, I would implore somebody to find a great coach or, or somebody that can put that structure in place for you uh, that that's going to have, you know, 75 to 80 percent of your your um, uh, routine is going to be in that aerobic zone. You want it. You want to make sure you, you stay in that. Uh, those are some things uh, that I would definitely uh, take the heart. And then nutrition, you know, nutri nutrition's, I, I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not a picture perfect guy when it comes to nutrition. I mean, I have my downfalls. I, I like certain things and, um, but definitely nutrition is, is definitely a plus and also nutrition on the actual run itself. The marathon, I think there's a lot to learn, uh, with, with regards to that. And you can really mess up some times if you don't have the right uh, nutrition plan in place. So. Mm -hmm. And that, right. that's where some of the trial and error on the long runs comes into play as well, right? I, I enjoy doing the 20-mile runs purely exactly the same as what I'm going to be doing on race day. And yep. that will right away tell you if your stomach is going to get upset or not. And even train the night before with the same dinner as what you're going to eat before a race and any of these kind of Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Yeah. I, do, I do want to go back to what you said earlier because... Please. Um, you mentioned for you it worked really well to find a coach and to have the guidance and to go that route, right? So I think there's two train of thoughts there yes. that some people or quite a few people actually do need that guidance or that consistency. For mm -hmm. me personally, purely because <laughs> I have a bit of a crazy schedule like many other people yeah. do of so, like there's quite a bit of modification of my training schedule. So although, Absolutely. although I pencil in, I make my own training schedules and I have yeah. certain guidelines that I follow there. So I do know um, I a certain mileage that I want to get to or a certain yeah. training time that I want to get to. Yes. I know I absolutely need at least one, if not two uh, rest days in my training schedule. 
Okay. I do know yep. I can run more in the weekends. I have less time during the week, but at least I can get yep. my lunch runs in. And yep. then from there on, I typically do three weeks of building volume, 10% a week. And then the fourth yep. week, a step back week of 30 to, yep. 30 to 40% less. And yep. so for me, I pencil out my own training schedule and I try to hold myself accountable. That being yep. said though, having someone else, especially once you pay him, or having yeah. someone that you feel you're like holding you accountable and checks back in with you and who gives yeah. you shit when you don't do certain yes. things or who exactly. at least asks you questions about it. Yeah. I think puts another layer of, of a yes. barrier of doing it versus not doing it. Right. So yeah, it's exactly. just more the self motivation for this versus the guided motivation over there. Yep. But I think you make several valid points over there. Yep. So. Yep. And then also Strava is another thing I use as well. Um, you know, I'm typically the in my group. I'm typically the first one out the door, so I'm the first one to record the activity during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I honestly, I take it a badge of honor, like I'm I'm laying the foundation for everybody else that day, right? Yeah. So may, may, maybe they're getting out of bed and they're, they look at Strava and they're like, all right, Bobby's gone out and done 10 miles today. I need to I need to you know get in shape. So yeah. Strava is another great tool. Uh, yeah. motivation tool as well yeah i think strava is a big one for me and it's a fun way to connect with other people as well and see oh, what yeah. your friends and other runners are doing out there absolutely i do think what you mentioned earlier the and the mephitone facebook group is really good yes. to build up a solid community of i think three or four thousand members at this point they have really yep. good conversations in particular about heart rate training and nutrition going on then we started yep. our own extra mileist Facebook group. There's a lot of yep. good good conversations happening over there as well. People running into the same kind of things. Oh yeah. Um, then you have mentioned the importance of community as well, right? And running yeah, together yeah. with other people from time to time. Um, and you also volunteer at some of the races. Can you tell yes. a little bit more about one of the races that's coming up that you're volunteering? Yeah, I, I appreciate you giving me the time to do this. So yeah. I'm wearing this shirt right here. It's uh, the Texas Big Star Half Marathon and 5K, right? So this is our third annual um, marathon, right? It's a local race. It's the first endurance race in the city of Frisco, uh, Texas. And basically, it's my second year to volunteer as, as uh, on the race committee. So last year, what I did uh, for the first time was I helped um, do the, the aid stations, the water stations, right? So I helped, you know, put up the, the water coolers and you know, and tear mm -hmm. them down and those sorts of things. But we had eight or nine water stations, right? We had a man, um, but it's kind of doing that, right? <clears throat> but the, the beauty of this particular race here is it benefits the North Texas uh, Charity Committee uh, Giving Foundation. And basically we raise money for local nonprofits uh, through grants and things like that. So uh, they've raised over $150,000 to local charities, which is wonderful, right? That's incredible, yeah. Yes, it's, it's great. And, and this year, um, actually uh, next year will be our, our third race. It'll be April 14th. So those people that, that didn't get into Boston, because Boston is that Monday, mm -hmm. um, if they want to come out and run the race, so we'd love to see you guys there. Uh, it's April 14th, uh, it's that, that Saturday. And I think it's the admission is like 65 bucks for a half marathon and maybe 35 bucks for the 5K. But ultimately, you know, I love doing this because um, it, it, it builds a sense of community in the running community, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's people that, that decide, you know what, I think I can do a 5K or I can do a half marathon. But it's kind of being that inspiration to them to say, hey, look, uh, if you achieve a half marathon, just, just think what you, you can do now, right? And so uh, after a half marathon, my first half marathon, I felt like I was on cloud nine, like, wow, I can really do something, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's a great feeling. And I, I know that, you know, uh, people um, will benefit help, but, you know, their health will, will get better as well through these, these the exercise and all that stuff. So, uh, again, I just I love doing it. It's just a way for me to kind of give back. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's it's all about, you know, like I said earlier, bringing the denominator up and everyone else around you uh, can benefit. So, yeah, I think like one one like I want to wrap it up over here. But one yes. thought, thing that I thought was so interesting earlier, you said. Because you discovered the low heart rate training and the improved nutrition, you feel like an overall 
happier runner as well or like a healthy, healthier runner and and i've experienced the absolute same thing and that's why that's why i'm actually doing what i'm doing right now as well yeah. like it is purely feeling that there's so many other people who can benefit from this and yes. the the impact that it has made on my life by actually going out there and having so much fun, more fun on my runs and it becomes so much more comfortable but even in general just because of the improved nutrition how much better you end up feeling just 24 7 i think there's yeah. a lot it's more of a holistic approach to running absolutely than and and health than than just the low heart rate training over there so absolutely that was, uh, that was very valid do you have any closing thoughts anything else that you feel like sharing with the group they can benefit from yeah. Yeah, you know, um, I, I think I've kind of hit on most everything. Uh, again, if, if I'm a new person here, which I want to reach those people, don't get discouraged would be my ultimate thing to say. Um, you know, let, look for people like the Extra Milest group, those the Maffetone groups, those, those Facebook closed groups. You know, ask to be part of that, you know. Uh, reach out to those folks. There's a lot of blogs. There's things like that. You know, get with your local communities. Get with the local runners. Uh, like the Frisco Run Club, we've got one here. They're great to, you know, reach out to. Um, but don't get discouraged and just be consistent, you know. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to this, and this will be my closing thought. But at the end of the day, it's not about running, right? But it's about being the best version of you possible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Not so that I can benefit, but so that I can give it to others. That's really the ultimate goal. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Right. Really appreciate it. I think a lot Thank of people you. are going to be benefiting from this. Awesome. Um, is there any place that people can find out more about you? Do you write anywhere or do you post any of your own no. running photos anywhere? Or? No, I don't actually. I'm, I'm on Facebook. Uh, they can reach out to me, Bobby Barker. Uh, I'm in Frisco, Texas. Uh, yeah. That's probably a way they can find me. And, uh, but I'm, I'm on the Extra Mileless group as well. Yeah. Uh, and on the Maffetone group, I kind of frequent those sites as well. Great. So. And please make sure to continue to share your progress. We'd love to hear from Absolutely. you. And it's really fun yep. to follow your journey along the way. So. Absolutely. I appreciate that. All right. And I'm following, I'm following yours, by the way, just so you know. Ah, good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. You have a great rest of your day. All right. You too. Thank All you. Right. I appreciate you. Thank you. Right. Bye -bye. Bye. Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Extra Milers podcast. I definitely had a lot of fun talking with Bobby and hope you guys learned a few things along the way as well. New episodes are coming up very soon again, so make sure to subscribe at extramilest.com slash subscribe. Also, I put together a 30-page PDF with a lot of the mar marathon fundamentals to really help people reach their marathon PR, sub three hour marathon of Boston qualifying time. You can download this on my homepage. Also, last reminder, we're having a giveaway this week at extramilest.com slash contest. And you can win two pairs of Stan socks. They're some of my favorite socks out there. Thought you might enjoy them as well. So uh, check out the website and you can enter there. And every week I'm giving away different items over there. Hope you enjoyed this episode and I look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Have a good one. Later.